everybody, this is Sister Sherry Parrott. I am the pastor's wife at the Beacon of Hope Pentecostal Church, and I just wanted to share some thoughts that uh, came to me with the help of my granddaughter and her class, who were sent outside on the last week of school. Well, today she sent me an image of this colorful graphic poster that they made um, that depicted their experience of observing the watermelon and tasting the watermelon, talking about the watermelon. And they began to talk in the, as I was reading the graphic, and I'll post it in my uh, comments. But they began to talk about what they felt about the watermelon. Okay, they were telling the watermelon in each sentence what they felt about the watermelon. Like, you are round, you are green, you are striped. <laughs> and this got me thinking about watermelon because I love watermelon. I'm, I'm very much a watermelon enthusiast. And I eat it quite a lot throughout the summer. And But I started thinking about it at the point whenever they said your rind is bitter and 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 thoughts just kind of started coming to me so i wanted to share them with you and my reflections about watermelon which is kind of corny but it's not it's watermelon this says this has a label on it, it says melon up <laughs> so we're gonna melon up um so uh whenever i began to write down my reflections about watermelon i said watermelon you grew in the ground you were picked. You were thumped for ripeness. You were dirty. You were washed. You were labeled. You were, um, let's see. You, your rind was tough. You were broken open. Your juice spilled. It was sticky, it was messy, it was hard to contain. Your fruit was delicious and satisfying. It contained seeds which could be planted for regrowth purposes. Your rind was bitter and good for nothing. Your nutrient-laden fruit was so refreshing. I love you, watermelon. And I do, I love watermelon. I'm getting ready to eat probably about half of this right now. So if you haven't guessed it by now, I'm not talking about watermelon. I'm talking about us. Jesus chose us and we were covered in filth from the world that we were surrounded in and that we dwelled in. But he chose us and he washed us in baptism in his name he baptized us with the Holy Ghost. Our flesh was broken by his word, which is sharper than any two-edged sword. The process was messy. We didn't cut clean every time. <laughs> we often slipped from his grasp. We came out in unattractive chunks instead of perfect slices or rounded scoops. But our flesh was bitter, our rind, and unenjoyable by anyone who experienced it, including us. Others did benefit when we gave up the best part of ourselves. And Jesus knew all along that we had something to offer. So here are some verses to consider regarding being chosen. John 15, 19 says, If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. John 3 and 5 says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Acts chapter, um, that's about being washed. Baptize in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 10, verse 43 says, To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. And in that same setting, he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. 
then talking about the word and how sharp it is. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the design, d dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Separate the flesh from the spirit, and it's good. <laughs> Joint and marrow. It's a discerner. The word is a discerner. The sword, the thing that cuts apart, the rind from the fruit, the flesh from the spirit. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And that's Jesus. Jesus knows everything inside of us, the good and the bad, and he knows how to separate it. Then um, he said, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you and ordained that you should go forth and bring forth fruit. So be fruitful today and think about the watermelon. Think about, you don't want the rind. You don't want anything most likely to do with the rind. Some people might pickle it, but even then, that's a process. <laughs> but just taking the watermelon for itself, you're not eating the rind. The rind is not the good part. And that's the same with us. The flesh, our flesh that we walk in, that's not the goodness. That's not what people are refreshed by. That's not what they are attracted to. In fact, that's bitter and not useful at all. So cut straight to the fruit, to the delicious fruit. Even if it's messy and you have to <laughs> hit your knees in repentance occasionally and uh, be separated. Get in that word and let it work on your insides. And let the seeds even come out from the fruit and gather those seeds and plant them in someone else's life so that they can be fruitful too. I just wanted to share the watermelon story with you that I was thinking about today. God bless you.